Good afternoon, fourth graders. This is Mr. B, and we are going to be talking about writing today. Uh, so far, this week in writing, you have learned about uh, different types of structures, linear and circular uh, narrative structures, as well as uh, plot. And you've talked about all the different components that make up the plot of a story. Well, today we're going to be talking about dialogue. Every good narrative writing piece has dialogue. And dialogue is very simply the conversations that characters have with one another. Okay? Now, when you write dialogue in a story, you have to include certain things to show that these characters are saying, or who's saying what, and these characters are, are having a conversation. So I have this little slideshow here that we're going to go through and uh, it's going to show you some of the rules and some examples and we're going to try to figure out some, uh, uh, we're going to try to practice a few sentences that include some dialogue structure. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is quotation marks. Quotation marks are used to show someone uh, someone's exact words. That's what we talk about all the time when we say somebody, when we're pulling a quote from the text. We're pulling out the exact words from the text, okay? So we use this in narrative writing too. We use quotation marks to show somebody's exact words. So the marks go before and after a person's word. So for the example here, I'm ready, said Todd. And you can see after what they said, or before what they said, there's two quotation marks. And after what they said, there's two quotation marks. <laughs> Now, the rules, <clears throat> excuse me, there's a few different rules that you have to use and follow when you are quoting somebody and using quotation marks. So, when, when you are quoting somebody or when you're writing down what somebody is saying like you're going to be in your story, you have to begin, so you're going to write your quotation mark, but you have to begin the quote with capital letters. Okay, because it's usually what they're saying. It's the start of a sentence. So it's the same rules that you would when you start a sentence, right? You're going to begin it with a capital letter. Okay. <clears throat> you're going to use a tag to show who the speaker is. So either before or after the quote, you're going to typically say who said that quote. For example, if you look up at this one, I'm ready, said Todd. So here's the tag. Ta said Todd is the tag. <laughs> You're going to put quotation marks around the person's exact words. And then you're going to use, you're going to follow kind of the same grammar rules that you would normally, other than the quotation marks. You're going to use those around those sentences, but you're going to use the other punctuation marks within the quote. So if they're asking a question, you're still going to use a question mark. If they're exclaiming something, you're going to use an exclamation, uh, exclamation point. If, you, if they're just saying a sentence, you're going to still use a period, but they have to go, and also commas. <clears throat> as well, but they're going to all stay within the quotation marks. So let's look at a couple examples. I would love some pizza, said Natalie. So you can see the two quotation marks are on either side of the, um, of the quote, right? And then inside the quote, we have the punctuation, which here's the comma, and then the tag, the tag is said Natalie. So we're just, we're Describing who said that quote. Here's another one. Here's some correct and incorrect examples. So an incorrect, let's go to the zoo, said Zane. So why this is incorrect, there's a couple of reasons. You can look at the correct column for those reasons. It's missing a couple of things. It's missing the beginning quotation mark, the capital letter at the beginning of that quote. It's also missing the end mark, which is the comma here in this case. And we didn't capitalize the person's name, Zane. And we also didn't include the period. Okay. The same thing happens in this bottom sentence here. We didn't capitalize the beginning of the quote. It's got the first quotation mark, but it doesn't have the last one. And even after what the person said, it doesn't have the, uh, the comma at the end of what they said. So we're just going to do a little practice here. There's two sentences here. My mom bought me a new puppy, said Mia, and I will need a bed for the puppy, Mia told mom. So I'm going to put the quotation marks where they go at the beginning 
an end of exactly what they said, right? My mom t bought me a new puppy, right? At the beginning, my, and at the end, after puppy, after the comma there. And the same thing with this bottom sentence. It goes right before the I and right after the puppy. Okay. Let's skip that next one. We're going to go down here. I'm going to type one of these. I'm not going to do the whole thing because I just want to show you. So, in order to fix this one, this first one here, everyone take out your computers, said Mrs. Penny. I'm going to start with a quotation mark, which is that right next to the enter button on your computer, there's, you're going to hit shift, and then there should be a quotation mark you see there. And you can use that same button for the beginning and end one. Everyone take out your computers, said Mrs. Penny. Period. Now, you can see I made a mistake here. I got the first quotation mark, and I also capitalized that first letter of the quote, but I did not include my end mark, which in this case is going to be a comma, or and my end quotation mark. Okay? So I make sure I make sure that's probably the trickiest part is making sure that you end the quote with your end quotation mark and the extra tricky part. Is making sure you end it with that have the have that end mark to show that this is the end of the quote as well. <clears throat> to have that comma there. Let's do another one. My computer is broken, cried Max. Now there's a couple of mistakes here. We're gonna fix them. I'm gonna start with my quotation mark. Type in my computer is broken. Now this is the end of the quote here. So I'm gonna put a comma. End quotation mark. Messed up. Okay. Cried Max. Now the other problem with this sentence is Max is not capitalized. Got to make sure that in the tag you capitalize the person's name. Okay. The last one we're gonna do real quick before we end it. I'm gonna talk about one more thing. It is not broken. The battery has died replied Mrs. Penny. Okay, so there's two sentences here, kind of two sentences here within this quote. So we're going to start with a quotation mark. It is not broken. Period. Now, the person's still talking here. We're not going to end quote it yet. We're going to still continue to type. The battery, there's no battery there, didn't I? Has died. End mark, which is your comma, end quote. And now I include my tag, replied Mrs. Penny. I'm not to set the, the quote, obviously. So you can see, even within a quote, there could be multiple sentences. You don't have to include a quotation mark after each sentence because the person could be, just be con continuing to talk sentence after sentence or question after question however many sentences they are saying so you can include the quotation mark i mean a quotation could be a paragraph long it could be very long um, so usually you know stop with your end quote until after the person or after you want that person to be done talking because you're going to be writing a story with them having dialogue between each other okay so there's some practice there now we're going to talk about one other thing and that is descriptive words. Now, descriptive words are adjectives. <clears throat> now, it's important when you are near, when you are writing to include good describing words. Okay, it gives the reader a better picture of what you're writing about. Right. So here's just some examples, and I'm going to scroll through these. I'm not going to read these all, but you can pause the video and kind of you and use some of these as you want to, or just kind of make note. Of some of these good describing words, I found these because they break, it breaks them down into different categories. I thought would be useful for you guys. So these are adjectives that tell about a noun and tell about size. This is an adjective that tell how many. <coughs> Excuse me. In that tell about feelings. Here's some adjectives that tell about how something sounds and how something looks. Here's some adjectives that tell about how something tastes and how something smells. Here's some that tell about how something behaves 
more colors, obviously. Shapes and textures. That's it. Now you can obviously Google search any amount of adjectives that you want to. You can look up words and synonyms for different words to make better describing words for things that you want <clears throat> to talk about or describe more in more detail. But describing words are good to include because they help the reader picture what you are writing about, have a better mental picture of what you're writing about specifically. So make sure in your writing that you are including good describing words. Um, after you are done with this video, friends, you're going to go into Google Classroom and under today's date, Thursday 11.12, and go to the writing exit slip question. Now this question today, I'm going to open this up here. As you are fixing this quote here, so there's this sentence, or multiple sentences in question, that have some mistakes in them, and you're going to use quotation marks to put them in the right place. So find the right places to put quotation marks within these sentences, okay? Now identify who's talking to who. Okay, and make sure you put the quotation marks and the end marks in the right spots. All right, I hope you all have a great afternoon, and I will talk to you tomorrow.